At our heart, we humans are explorers, and it's telescopes like these that, for now, are our spaceship to the stars. I'm standing here at the Very Large Telescope, which is the most advanced optical observatory in the world. We can gaze 13 billion years or more into the past and answer questions like, where did we come from? Where are we going? And that most important question, what is this universe that we're living in? What scientists have discovered so far is that 95% of what makes up our universe simply can't be accounted for. The 5% of matter we can perceive abides by the laws of physics as we understand them. But when scientists applied the laws of gravity to how fast nearby galaxies are rotating, the math didn't add up. Their calculations proved that there must be missing matter since the forces should be ripping the galaxies apart, but they don't. The reason is because of a mysterious type of particle known as dark matter an invisible force which binds these galaxies together. I believe that if we can solve this mystery, it may transform physics as we know it, in the same way that Isaac Newton's laws of motion led to steam locomotives and rockets, and Albert Einstein's theories of relativity paved the way for satellites and nuclear power. And that has physicists scrambling to find it. We're gonna be using the uh cage in order to take a, a 10 minute long trip to get ourselves over a mile underground. Richard Gateskill is the principal investigator here at the Large Underground Xenon Experiment, or LUX, the world's most sensitive dark matter detector. Why are we going down a mile beneath the ground here? In order to search for dark matter, we need to find a really quiet, environment. Cosmic rays are produced in the upper atmosphere due to very high energy particles yes. hitting it. What we do is we use that overburden of rock to shield out the cosmic rays. When you take our Milky Way and just look at how the stars are arranged in it, it's very clear that the whole thing is rotating. In order for uh, that rotation to be occurring at the speed it is, there would have to be nearly 10 times more matter in the Milky Way than we had any evidence for. The Milky Way shouldn't hold together, it should just fly apart. And the particles we're looking for, uh, these dark matter, we actually call them WIMPs. Uh, it's an acronym simply for Weakly Interacting Massive Particle. By weak, we mean that they will simply pass through the Earth and out through the other side. Only very occasionally, because of the properties of the WIMP, does it choose to interact. Right now, we're actually standing on top of this enormous 80,000 gallon water tank, wow, our so dark matter detector. Lux. The Lux dark matter detector is submerged within this tank of highly purified water. Inside, a second tank is filled with supercooled liquid xenon. If a dark matter particle strikes a xenon atom in this ultra-quiet environment, the photosensors will measure this mysterious particle. So we've been looking for these weakly interacting massive particles for a very long time. What have we found? Nothing. Theorists continue to show that dark matter could well be there and just be so weakly so interacting, weakly interacting that we haven't yet built a big enough detector to see it. People would dearly like to be the first scientists to be standing on top of an experiment that actually saw Solves dark matter the for the first time. greatest mystery in modern physics. I, I mean, without a doubt. Since we can't capture this elusive particle, in Switzerland, they're actually trying to make it themselves. CERN's Large Hadron Collider actually recreates the conditions of the Big Bang to study particles on an unprecedented level. Dr. Talika Bose has sifted through the data produced by the collider, looking for dark matter characteristics. This is where the heart of the experiment is. You have a beam of protons going in one of the beam pipes in a certain direction, and another beam of protons going in the other beam pipe in the opposite direction. There are four points where the beam pipes are made to intersect, and that is happening in the center of the detector here. So the beams collide, and you have this explosion, a mess of particles that comes out, 
And what we are trying to see as a result of this is what are these particles that are produced. What we are doing is, with these collisions, recreating what must have happened moments after the Big Bang. I mean, these are kind of little moments of creation that are happening inside these detectors every time that beam of protons collides. We can theorize that dark matter came out of the same processes, the same creation out of the Big Bang that everything else was made out of. So I guess if you're able to recreate the Big Bang in a way in these detectors, you'll also be able to produce dark matter and that is one of our major goals. Build the biggest machine in the world to sort of understand the tiniest of particles yeah. because they will give us clues to the big questions. Yeah, awesome. If they manage to find new particles, it could prove the missing link of a fundamental force of nature that most people assume we understand, gravity. So I think most of us think we have a pretty good understanding of gravity. I mean, we see how it works in our everyday lives and planets rotate around the sun and the you know, galaxies continue to spin and spiral, but what's missing about this picture of gravity? What, what don't we know? So we understand gravity at the macroscopic level in the sense of, you know, it keeps us, you know, on this uh, floor supplanted here. However, we don't really understand it at the microscopic or the particle level. So the, the particle picture of gravity and how it fits into the standard model is incomplete. Potentially, these answers could bridge us towards answering the question of dark energy. The search for an answer to the mystery of dark matter led to an even bigger discovery, dark energy. Dark matter has the gravitational effect of holding galaxies together. But dark energy is actually an entirely different force that is expanding the universe seemingly infinitely out. The Very Large Telescope Array in Chile was key to the discovery of this even more mysterious force. This telescope can see down to 29th magnitude. Wow. So that's a factor of a billion. So if your eye collects one photon, this thing collects a billion photons. Bruno Leibengut was a member of one of the Nobel Prize winning teams that shocked the world when they discovered that not only was the universe expanding, this expansion was actually accelerating. The way you found that this dark energy, this acceleration of the universe was, you looked at supernova. Yeah. What are supernova? So supernovae are uh, exploding stars. I think that's the simplest way of putting it. That is a very specific type of an explosion, which we believe always reaches the same luminosity. So it, it, it becomes bright, it peaks, and then it fades away, yes. disappears. If you have your 60 volt bulb in your room, you know how much light it's going to get. If you see it, the 60 volt bulb at your neighbors, it's going to be fainter. And if you have a universe that just expands regularly, then you, you just plot this up on a ruler and you will find an equal distance. But then we did the measurement. This isn't right. <laughs> the distance supernovae are too far away. So yes, the universe is expanding, but it looked like it was expanding even faster the further you looked away. Now, in a universe with gravity alone, you cannot do that. Yeah, what explains that? So what explains that? Well, dark energy. And what is that composed of? What is that? Who knows? Oh, you tell me. That's the question we need to answer. Exactly. And while dark energy and dark matter may not weigh on people's minds each day, we are actually already benefiting from them by more than just their gravitational pulls. That's because the enormous amount of technology that has been developed in order to aid scientists as they seek to better understand the universe has led to incredible advancements that we now take for granted in our everyday lives. So the World Wide Web was actually invented here at CERN as a way for the scientists and engineers to collaborate and communicate and build these massive physics experiments. In 2015, the experiments on the Large Hadron Collider generated over 40 petabytes worth of data. That's 40 million gigabytes worth of data. And who knows what discoveries and impacts on our lives will come from the sifting through of the data to discover things like dark matter and the fundamental forces and particles that make up our universe. no better driver of innovation than just asking really, really big, hard questions. 
we use uh, image analysis software yes. to see galaxies or stars, and now you use them to find cancer. And my question is, how do I understand dark energy better? Somebody, maybe, will use that knowledge and develop something different that makes our lives better. It's in the DNA of our species to explore new frontiers. This exploration of the unknown is responsible for the success of our species. And by better understanding our universe, we empower ourselves to solve the problems we face and propel ourselves into the stars. Science is never finished. When you have new observations that show you something else, then you have to modify your picture. Science will go on forever. Because there's always something new to discover. That's right.